Ever seen an abacus? You know, those centipede-like things with wooden beads and rows? They're sold mostly in knick-knack import shops for wall decoration, but in fact, an abacus is an adding machine, calculator, and computer. On second thought, that's not quite true. The abacus is just a visual record of the computations going on in the mind of the person using it. Robert Fulgham. Welcome to the Lost Traveler podcast. I'm your ever-loving host, Henry Cameron Allen. And I'm very excited to meet a new friend today, Sensei Miwako. And she is born in Japan, but now lives in Portland, Oregon and has made a mark for herself in America by starting a mathematics school that is focused on the abacus and the use of the abacus as a tool. Um, Welcome, konnichiwa. I am so happy to have you and to meet you (laughs) and to have this exciting conversation with you. Thank you, good morning. Ohayou gozaimasu, konnichiwa, Henry and everybody. Yes, my name is Miwako Sakawayashi, and I was born and raised in Japan. But now I am living in, I have been living in Portland since 1992, which is my more than half of my life living in the U.S. And then less than half of my life living in Japan. People okay. call me Sensei Miwako, especially that, you know, like my teaching world. So what the sensei is not my name. Sensei means a teacher in Japanese. So as a respect, my student, my student parents or alumni or the people who know through my teaching world, they call me sensei. So it became my kind of middle name. Yes, <laughs> I think that's beautiful. And I'm proud to call you sensei because... I, what I know of the word is that it really is a word of respect and that you are a master in what you teach. And it's a way to recognize uh, and appreciate what you have accomplished by the people that you are teaching. And you are teaching me. Uh, and uh, thank you. And uh, this podcast reaches people in 41 countries around the world. So the reach is now broadened and you will be known <laughs> as a sensei. Uh-huh. Thank people, you. I think. Thank so, what, you so let me ask you a question. What, sure. What part of Japan were you were you born and raised? My hometown is called Toyama. So it's many people know Tokyo. Are you from Tokyo? No, I'm not from Tokyo. I'm from Toyama. Toyama is located to the northwest of uh, Tokyo, but facing on the Sea of Japan side. It's not the Pacific Ocean side. So mm-hmm. even though, you know, Japan is such a small island, yeah. but just a completely different, you know, like a, the atmosphere, different people, different culture. You know, it's just everything is so different. It's more my hometown is countryside. But at the same time, my where I live here right now, Oregon, and my hometown, Toyama, are sister states. Ah. So that's the reason I chose to coming to U.S., but on not only U.S., just, you know, specifically Oregon. That was that my 31 years ago, the journey started. Wow. What was the what was the pivotal moment that made you decide to leave your <laughs> safe, comfortable, traditional life and and come to a completely different part of the world, different culture, and one that frankly has a a varied history with the Japanese people? You know, I wish or maybe I I could I should say, yes, I was really aiming to this that's why I came here no honestly I even did not even think or even dream about to you know like a living in U.S. and then married having the making the family and then building up the you know teaching school never ever thought zero honestly zero but like I you know recently I watched and then listened those you know famous Steve Jobs interview. Mm-hmm. If you look back 
my journey was already started yes. as I was born and raised under my late parents who were blind. Blind parents, you know, raised me. Wow. And then as I was raising, you know, growing up in Japan, I knew I always felt something. I am not belonging here. I'm not belonging here, which is in Japan, my country. Yeah. I am different. I'm different. So I always has a kind of the desire to, I'm going to, you know, get out, get out, get out. I hear so that's that what so I knew. often. <laughs> I hear that so often from people who are born into a, a place and a time and a culture, and they never feel a sense of home, that this is where I belong. This is where I and meant to live out my my life, you know. I was very fortunate that my father, uh, he was a cultural diplomat for the U.S. government, and he worked for an agency that no longer exists because their mission was to be sort of the propaganda wing of the U.S. government to take all this appropriated culture. Uh, this is before there was a McDonald's outside the United States. Do you remember those days? Wow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, and it was to to take this culture and wrap it up in a in a red, white, and blue package and sell it back to the world as American. You know, we did we did it better, and I think that that sort of messed with with the minds and the perceptions of not only one's own cultural experience, but also it put a a shiny veneer over the United States mm -hmm. that was very attractive. And once the mission was accomplished, they folded the agency. There was no need to have oh. this because, you know, then the satellites came around and television and global, yeah. global media. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, this is, you know, Henry, maybe I wanted to say 31 years ago, when I tried to come into US, that that time there was no internet. Right. No, no internet, only phone or fax. Right? So I how I can find Oregon was I have to at that time I was working at the bank and then right after I finished, I just go straight to the bookstore and then going to the, you know, like a, you know, like a studying abroad section. There was a thick book. I open up and then not any mini mini more. I quickly pick going to the Oregon and I found the Portland. And then there was a several, you know, private school, public school. And of course I have to go to the English second language, you know, like a classes. Right. We good or bad. Even though I studied English, Japan give us a, you know, like an English, you know, like a studying, but the, our, the way how they teach is only writing and the reading, not the listening and the speaking. So my English level, skill level came here was almost nothing. Yeah. But that time, I have to go digging in myself to finding my information if I want to. Now, you don't really need to. Even if you just, you know, Google it, just a form, just a tiny form, put it on Henry you know, Cameron Allen, boom. Yeah. And yeah. you don't even, you know, without knowing you know, anybody, but I, I can just grab your information right on. And then from from you, the person, you are the one, you know, giving all the, you know, like a resource and the information and, you know, like everything. Such a easier way to, you know, start, you know, like exploring, comparing your father's, you know, like a time yeah. They are the one have to, you know, like a more, more, you know, like a stand up themselves and then traveling and the research and communicating with those people. That was a time, right? Well, so and having to use our, use our intellect as well. I was just having a conversation uh, in another podcast episode with a gentleman who was on the cutting edge front end of AI development. Mm -hmm. And what he was, we were talking about the future of AI because there are a lot of people, teachers included, who are very fearful about yeah. how fast it's progressing, what we don't know about it. It's going to be yeah. self-teaching. And what does that mean for the future of our industries, for the future of education? Are you tired of feeling run down? 
Do you wish there was a natural, non-invasive, drug-free way to improve your overall health and well-being? If so, then let me introduce you to the Super Patch Company. Super Patches are a range of small neurotech patches that can help with a variety of issues, including sleep, immunity, pain mitigation, athletic performance, focus, anxiety, and stress. They're safe for everyone to use, and they're backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Order your Super Patches today. Now available in the EU, UK, Turkey, Canada, and the US. If you're ready to take control of your health, you can find out more online at dianedinkmeyer.superpatch.com. Super Patches. There's a patch for that. One of the things I wanted to get in with you about um, not only just coming from the time and the place that you came from and the impulse that drove you from there to Portland. Uh, and, you know, it's funny as I moved, I'm in Spain right now and I moved here from the UK and I saw a, a map of the world and I was studying a little bit about the UK. And uh, did you know that you can fit the entire United Kingdom England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, North Ireland, you can fit all of it into Oregon. <laughs> oh, really? In terms of land mass. That's how big yeah. Oregon is. And that's how small well, the UK is as well. Well, I mean, the same thing. Like in my country, my country can almost fit it into the state of California. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? We have so, we're so off kilter when it comes to the, our sense of scale and our right. sense of scale in the world we have um i don't know if you if you knew this but um sadly i lost my son to brain cancer when he was just 13 oh. years old. i was a single father I'm sorry. and he I'm was my sorry. only child and it, it, it's a slow progression thank you um a slow progression of loss which is actually a blessing because they're not in a great deal of pain or discomfort and they just slowly expire. And there was a, a moment, probably about three months before his passing. And he he really couldn't function at that point. And I would prop him up on the on the sofa and he would watch documentaries about nature or the universe. He loved science and space and he loved his abacus, I have to say. Oh, um, wow, that's great. <laughs> and um and I, I was in the kitchen doing something and I heard the narrator on the television say, you can fit 14 planet Earths into the North Pole of Saturn. Oh, really? And I was like, what? And I looked around the corner and there was a graphic of Saturn, the picture we've all seen. And boop, 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 there were 14 little Earth graphics around the crown of Saturn. And I thought okay. to myself, it's that big? I never thought because... Every image of Saturn we've ever seen has been in a book or on our mobile or a computer or a television screen. It's this big, right? So yeah. look at that picture of Saturn next to your body and you realize in that moment that your scale is completely off. And then they put Saturn next to Jupiter and you couldn't even see the Earth anymore. It was so small. And then they put Jupiter next to the sun and the Jupiter was small and Saturn was tiny. And then they kept going all the way up to, I think it was the star uh, in Orion's uh, constellation of Betelgeuse. And the massive size of this single star in our own solar system. Uh-huh. It takes 1,100 years to do one rotation around that star. Wow. We are 1, so tiny. We are so tiny. We are so micro, nano, nano, dino. We're less than ants. And, and what that moment opened me up to was everything is possible. The biggest vision, the biggest imagining that we could possibly dream is still very, very, very tiny compared to everything outside of us isn't it? Yeah, it is. And you know, Henry, since you're sharing with me those story, I also would like to share with you, like, as I told you earlier, the, my late parents, both of them are blind. Amazing. So blind people, 
people think blind cannot see anything. And that's not that's true. Blind people can see something which we as a sighted people cannot see. That's right. Right? So like you said, just only imagination. You know, like a, your son, when he's going to, you know, through the doors, you know, like a passes, he yeah. will see something which we would never see something, which we could never even feel it. Imagine it. We couldn't even imagine no. it. You know, so to me, like, a, you know, had the parents who were blind and raised by the parents who were blind gave me a lot of insight. Although now I became, you know, my, I'm 58. And then now I, I, of course, after I lost my parents, I really deeply appreciate what they have been giving me. <laughs> but when I was a child, unfortunately, I was buried because my parents are blind. And then as my character conflicts with those feeling, and I always try to fight with them. And then, you know, but... There was not always in the happy moment, and I was I was always felt oh I wish my my father my mother is not blind I wish I was born in the, you know like a you know normal you know sighted oh, yeah. parent to father father can holding us and then driving the car taking us whatever this and this mm -hmm. I honestly I thought because that's how the kids is right but now I look back. I think the things which I was not the given, but I was able to, you know, like uh, reproduce myself, the insight. You know, I couldn't be, you know, the the giving back or something, but the, something like uh, what I, what you said, what I learned myself is very connected that uh, the things which we cannot see or which we couldn't feel, but it's just only for our imagination. It's only here in our heart. So right now, like your son or my parents or the older people who you know loved us but already no longer in this world are always overwatching us. Yeah. It's just a matter of how we take it. The That's moment we sense. really start listening to our heart, it's already there, right? Our universe, all this huge universe is just countless. I can, we cannot. But the moment you are tuned to it and into the point where you are, even though you are in Spain, I'm in Poland, Oregon, in a different time zone, but we are here at the moment. That's right. So that's how it's very easy to synchronize, to make the harmony, to, you know, like a connecting all, all the dots. Yeah, you know, it's a beautiful story to me. Thank you for sharing. You know, I, you're welcome. Beautiful. Thank you. I I think you're absolutely right. You know, we are at a time in history for the first time where perhaps you know the perception can be that the Earth is flat again, because I can have a real time conversation with someone in Portland, someone in. Uh, you know, Europe, someone in Brazil, someone all in the same moment. Right. And even though we're in different time zones, it, it's just a miraculous time. And I and I really think that it shows the ingenuity of the human being and the imagination is a muscle and it must be used like any other muscle to strengthen. You know, yeah. um, I, I really believe that. And Actually, I want to I want to move to a, a question that this is something that I've started now in my fourth season that I ask each of my guest co-hosts every episode to think of a question for the next one, for the next guest co-host. And so I have okay. a question for you uh -huh. from the previous co-host. And I want you, we'll ask at the end, so I don't want to put you on the spot, Think of a question okay. for the next co-host that comes up in okay. your, out of this conversation. But your question okay. is, and I think it's very good for you. This is something I found is that some most of the time they're actually perfect for the person who they're being asked. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. that's good. Your question is, how can tapping into other cultures 
help you remove fear and discover your own spiritual path of least resistance. And out of this, what part do you play toward a better future for the world? It's a big question. <laughs> it is a big question, but yeah, yeah, you know, thank you. That is really wonderful because that's how I always felt. You know, yes, I am I am immigrant. I mean, I was never born here. My children, yes, they did. And then they are, they are half Japanese, quarter German, quarter Libyan. Wow. And then born here, raised here, and I'm sure they are going to have a life here. But like a your question, to me, grounding down, especially now I became an educator and I have been teaching, you know, last 23 years to the children who would like to learn, you know, like abacus. Mm. And then I am very fortunate to giving the skill to those children. But me living the, you know, like a foreign country as a Japanese and then raising the children to, in this country, I feel to me is an appreciation what you are giving and also the respect to the people who are giving us the chance to live here. A guy wire is a tensioned cable that is designed to enhance the stability of a freestanding structure. Think of me as your guy wire in terms of life skills mentoring. You're perfectly capable of standing stably on your own two feet. But I'm a cable that can enhance your stability. I'm available for individual or couples counseling, life skills mentorship, child loss, grief support, LGBTQ plus support. I can also officiate weddings, end of life ceremonies, baby namings, invocations, or whatever guidance you may need. I serve all genders, all ages. Sessions are affordable, discreet, private, and conducted online. Find me at guy-wire.org. Book your appointment today. I always felt one foot into my culture, one foot into the United States. I always feel I'm not completely in Japanese, but I'm not completely in, in America. I'm yeah. always half in, half out. Mm. So if if you have those, you know, like experience, how you can expect and, uh, you know, uh, to those you know, people who welcomed us to accept, it's just a matter of the respect to me. If we respect the people who welcoming us, it will be coming back to us. They also welcoming us to try to understanding my culture, where I come from, what I understand. Like at the end of the day, me, you, we were born in the almost same time, but the different regions, different background. But the end of the day, we coming out from this almost nearly, you know, the parents and then leaving into the, you know, fading away to the same place. Yeah. So I believe like, you know, we talk about, you know, pre, you know previously t talking about the universe. We are coming out from the same place. We're going out to the same place. It's not the difference to me. No, so that's why it's very small. <laughs> the planet we live no. on is very, very small. So that's why your question to me is, if you appreciate what you are giving, if you respect what you are, you know, also you, what you are giving, it will be generating back again. Because I, I would do the same thing if I living in Spain as a Japanese, if I living in Italy as a Japanese, if I living in South Africa, if I living in Korea, if I living in Indonesia, if I living in Mexico, I would do the same. If we, have, if we all have those two simple elements of the appreciation, 
and the respect. I think those whole world will be much more harmonious to, you know, like, a, you know, like, a, it, we, we all have a, you know, nature to be loved and want to love. So that's, that is my answer to mm-hmm. you and my, you know, your previous co-host. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, I, I think you're right. And, and it removes the fear. There's so much fear in the world. And I, and I believe that fear is born out of ignorance. And it's the fear of the unknown, the fear of the mystery. It is. Right? We, it's yeah. such a mystery when we don't travel and we don't see other lands. Now, it's as easy as, as looking at Google Earth. You can right. go and you can go to any point on the globe and you can see ancient cultures and you can see the ruins of ancient buildings that we have no idea how they were built right and and i think that once we see more of the world whether it's actual which is preferable or whether it's virtual even it gives us a reflection back to ourselves that's what i interpret the spiritual path of least resistance because there is so much resistance we resist resist what we don't understand. We resist what we fear. And if we start to meet one another on the common ground of our humanity, that eliminates yeah. the fear. And we say, oh, right. you're just yeah. like me. I'm just like you. Yeah. And even though yeah. I didn't grow up with blind parents physically, no. my parents had blindnesses too. <laughs> they had- yeah. They had ways of of navigating the world that allowed them their own unique perspective, right? And a unique set of skills that I didn't understand as a child and as a teen, and I didn't want to understand. That was their thing. I needed to find my own way. Um, I have two siblings, and it's as though the three of us were from completely different households. Mm -hmm. We were raised in the same house. We are so completely different. I know. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is very true. You know, another thing is like you said, like a, uh, I, like me myself, I, I was bullied when I was a child, and that my counter, you know, like <laughs> point was, you know, you think you have you are not a handicap, right. but you it's not the true. If you are not the handicap. Maybe the one moment, once you step out of the door, who knows, maybe car might be hit at you. It's and it maybe you, you, you maybe, because if you have everything, that means you, the more, you know, vice versa, you know, back and forth, maybe you could be losing anything for everything. And the, the moment you lost, and then you became a handicap. So mm-hmm. what is the difference? You know, you have everything. It does not mean that you are not a handicap, you know? The moment you lost everything, then you realize, oh my God. Like, this is a funny story I would like to share with you. You know, we we all, most of the people have a, a eyes and most of the figure, people can see. So when the light coming up, we can see. When the light coming down, we cannot see. Like a night comes, it's dark. Morning, daytime, light. So then there was a time in the evening, you know, I think I was at my parents' house and my kids were there too. So then we were cooking, 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 and all of a sudden, you know, breaker shut down and then dark. And then we we kind of stopped everybody, froze. I said, oh my God, it's dark, it's dark. And then my father (laughs) just walking, 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 you know, on the hallway, Without nothing happen, he's the one never stops. And then he, you know what he told me? He told me, welcome to my world. Yes. Wow. So that is Ooh. his world. I just got chills. You understand? So then I said, what are you talking about? Just Then he said, what do you want me to do? I said, just go over there, the breaker, just, you know, turn it back again. And in the meantime, we all quiet. You know, my mom, my sister-in-law, my kids, and my nieces, and myself, almost probably seven or eight of us in the kitchen. And then ah, all of a sudden became quiet. (laughs) And then TV shut down, everything shut down. And then my father just walking by himself in the dark. And then just turn it on. 
and they could <laughs> <laughs> So what I wanted to say is uh, we are so much relying on something which we can, we have no control. Yeah. Is that, you know, like a, such a, we living in a, such a small world. If you, if we living in an island which has no electricity, but just only relying on the sun up, sun down, sun up, sun up. Can you imagine what kind of life and <laughs> how much we... People have lived right? that way for thousands and thousands of years. In fact, the 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 way that we operate the world, yes, there are some jobs that happen at night that people wow. work, right? There's some work days that are that are, you know, only during the day. But most yeah. of the functioning world operates during the daylight hours, no matter where right. we are. There are still yeah. cultures that have no technology electronic technology, I should say, because they have great technology, even if it's a bow and arrow, is technology, right? And yeah. so we've been using technology for thousands and thousands of years to yeah. operate the world. Now, when somebody has what I call uh, a diff ability, D-I-F-F, -F, mm. a diff ability. Diff ability. <laughs> right? They, they have nice. diff different abilities. They're not dis anything. They're not less than you or me. Right. You saw that in that moment with your father. He had his way and his wisdom. Right. He knew yeah. how to navigate a dark world. To right. him, it's not dark, it's normal. Shadow and Light LLC was established by Dave Roberts and Reverend Patty Farino, co authors of When the Psychology Professor Met the Minister. Their mission is to empower individuals to transcend life's challenges by integrating spiritual practices with psychology to achieve peace. They are available for individualized spiritual counseling, virtual or in-person book club meetings, or presentations and workshops to universities, organizations, and other interested groups. For further information, visit psychologyprofessorandminister.com. Sponsorship and listener support of the Lost Traveler podcast benefits the Lost Travelers Club, a volunteer-operated charitable foundation under United Charitable, a 501c3 public charity. Peregrine is the proper noun we now use to describe a parent who endures the loss of their beloved child, forever carrying their memory and embarking on a lifelong journey of grief, resilience, and hope. The Lost Travelers Club provides programs, resources, and empowerment opportunities for peregrines globally who are navigating their grief journey. Parents of child loss, getting there together. You can support this important work by becoming a sponsor of this podcast or visiting www.losttravelers.club for more information or to make a donation. Thanks for listening and for your continued support. No. Uh, I want to I want to talk about speaking of ancient technology. I want to talk yeah. about the abacus. Oh, okay. Thank I want to know about your where was your passion for the abacus born and what was your journey of mastery to the point of opening a school? in another country that could give <laughs> ancient, ancient tool to a modern population of 21st century yeah. children. You know, thank you so much for asking me. This is kind of also, you know, actually kind of slightly related to my father's skill as well. Actually, my father was blind, but he had a professional skill, which he was an acupuncturist. What? Acupun yeah, it, Japan in Asia, some Asian country, not now, but uh, almost 50 years ago, that time, blind people job were acupuncturist. That's so, mind blowing. I've never heard that before. This is new information for okay, me. Okay, good, good. So I'm going <laughs> to tell you one thing. 
this is my kind of the joke. I have a friend who is acupuncturist here in the United States, in Portland, Oregon. I always teasing him, you know, by the way, I'm, I don't trust you because you are sighted. What, the, what miracle sign? What? I mean, like he knew because he also studied in, he's American, but he studied in you know, acupuncture in South Asia and including in Japan. Mm. So then I know what you meant. Yes, you're right. Because sighted people rely on their eyesight only. They are very weak for the finger and the sense of the things which we genuinely have. Okay? So that's why my father was blind, completely blind. But I even don't have to tell him what is a problem. He's just reading my, reading my pulse and then touch the ball, you know. Then he just fix it. Comparing the sided, you know, like uh, acupuncture, I have to explain to them, here I have a problem, here this. I said, come on, can you just get it? Right. You know? right. So back to my abacus journey. Abacus journey was starting from when I was second grader. I went to abacus school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five days a week, one hour and a half every day throughout the year. What is this? What is an abacus school? Abacus school is after like a cram school. So you know, just you know, teaching us to you know like a you know how to operate the bees just you know calculating how to do it but you know once i started to going there i just started to like it yeah. and i like it. and i my progress was so fast and then as i was third grader i started to started to competing with you know city and the region and then you know like uh, then fifth no sixth grader i started to competing at the national fifth sixth and then started the national and then i got you know like a, some you know prize it's, it's like a champion or whatever but and then some things was, I mean, like my teacher who is still teaching abacus, wow. she she decided to marry to the gentleman who is outside of the state, so she had to leave us. Oh. And then I that was more so saddest one of the saddest moments oh, because be I so love yeah I love abacus. I was so I was just ready to you know like. A, I I just live with abacus. I love so much, and then you know started you know like uh, winning all the you know like uh, awards and you know like uh, prizes and everything. Then she left, but you know after she left, I was kind of you know sold to the another abacus school, but my passion level goes down so much. But somehow, at some point, it left me in my heart. And then I only learned until sixth grader. And then I just, I said, no, no more. This is, I'm okay. So I kept it to my skill. And I went to the middle school, high school. And I went to those, you know, like a kind of like a vocational school. Then after that, I went to, uh, I started working at a, a bank for six years. You know, as again, that time, almost 32, no. Almost how many years ago? Oh my God. Almost nearly 38 years ago. <laughs> you know, still, you know, like a, a computer wasn't so really, you know, computer. Yeah. Still, we, they are relying on our human, you know, like a skill. Well, so and then, just to explain to, to our, our listeners, because they, again, we have listeners in 41 countries. I'm sure there are people <laughs> what listening. Is saying, what are they yeah. talking about? What is it? Yeah. Abacus? It is so a computer, Abacus, isn't it? Yeah, Abacus is an ancient, 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 ancient calculator, which is, I have been, you know, like watching and reading and so many things. It's just kind of go all the way to the Egypt, you know, like a counting in you know, a system, then going through the passing from the Egypt, passing into the Silk Road, coming into the China thousands of years ago. And then they have been using as a calculator. And then from almost nearly 400 years ago, from China to Japan. And so abacus is a counting bees vertical and the one top bees and the four bottom bees, depending on the size of the abacus vertical and you know, like a seven digit, 13 digit, 15 digit, and then 23 digit is one right now is very common. So there is a bees, lines of bees 
on metal then, rods, right? They're on the beads are on metal rods. Beads is, no, beads are actually like everything was made by the wooden. Oh, yeah. it's all wood. All wood. wood. Yeah, all wood. All wood. So I think many people know the abacus is like a 10 bees in the one, you know, one rod. That is called the abacus. But that is to me is a completely counting bees. Mm. But the what we are teaching is it's like a bees are you know, like a kind you know, Henny, you need to help me. <laughs> <laughs> She's grabbing because her advocates. It's very deep. Yes, I'm this is by the way, this is this is my almost 50 years old avocado. Wow. <laughs> this is my this is the velvet case. Oh my gosh, it's so big. Yeah. So top bees and yeah. the bottom bees. Bottom bees only four. Top bees are only one. Right. So there's a row of, of single beads along the top. Yeah. And then there's right. a barrier, and under the barrier, there are yeah. four beads. And how four many beads. sections are there? This is a 23 from here to here is 23. 23. That, so that means a 23 digit we can calculate. You can calculate okay. 23 digits. Yeah, wow. that's how we do. So this one uh, started, you know, like invented in Japan, and then now all worldwide, if the people said the abacus, oh, I learned abacus means uh, this abacus. Sometimes when you're going to the you know antique shop, you see two top bees, two top bees here. This is a two and the five bottom bees. Oh, okay. Gosh. So that is uh, Chinese abacus. So there are different so, kinds of abacuses for different yes. philosophies of mathematics. Correct. Really, right. right. Every so abacus I've seen has only been like this big, 10, and it's got right. each each bead has a different right. color. There's like a right. color coding system. Right. These right. are all natural beads. There's no color. Right, right. But this is the calculator. This is really can calculate addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, which means if you can do the, those four elements of the calculation, you can do everything. It's just a matter of the how to apply. Like a the maybe I can also explain to you many people said, well, Abacus, we have a computer, you don't need it. Yeah. And then, but it's not the true. My counterpoint is Abacus, once you learn, you don't need this to calculate, it, which means the visualization, like my father. My father can visualize it and then he can do it with that because blind people doesn't need actual things. They have a visualization, they can calculate. Computer or calculator, if you do not have this. Your mobile. Or even you have this, even you have this, if this is a battery is dead, out. Right, right. Right? But this, once you learn, you don't need this. The so only it's thing really is a you, it's, yeah. a men, it's a mental math tool Correct. that you Correct. learn the system of. And once you learn the system, you don't need the tool anymore. You rely completely no. on the muscle of your imagination. Right. It is. Right? And you can so calculate why, endlessly. Right. So that's why when I'm going to the you know business meeting or talking with someone, they started you know putting out the numbers and then the moment they're talking about oh yeah, that is a fifty-four. Yeah, 54 and then 20 percent is, you know, 10.8. I said, how do you do that? I said, well, yeah. you said the number. The moment the people just throwing out the numbers, I'm just able to just, you know, calculate them because I'm just ready to moving on the, as the way conversation moving on. But at the same time, people, most of the people do not have a skill which they don't even believe we can. Like to me, this is like another language of the number. Right. Like I'm Japanese. If someone talking to me Japanese, my mind already cut, you know, like I'm translating into the English and then say something else. That's right. right? That's it's just, right. A, it just exactly this abacus is another language of the number. 
Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm Queen B. Divine. The cure is conversation. And where can you find me? At bluntreflections.com, where I will be talking to guests from around the world that not only share their time, but their insights and their tips on how they became the best version of who they were meant to be. So if you're looking for a great story and a great time, check me out at bluntreflections.com. The cure is conversation. And remember, blase, blase means to tell your story. <laughs> people, most of the people are not introduced. That's why this is how that happened. That's come on. So that's why, in, in fact, my student, youngest student, five years old, and then even five years old, within the one year, they learned and their curriculum skill became third grade or fourth grader. And then Karika in 78 times 6, well, you know, like a 26 plus 59 plus 38, 123, they will do it like a, like a snapping in the finger. And then teachers who do not know the power of the abacus, they're looking at them like this, how did you do that? Yeah. The well, I, the, my, son, my son had an abacus and because he, right. attended, um, are you familiar with Waldorf schools? Yes, yes, I do. So he was a Waldorf kid and they okay. used the app. He learned how to use the abacus, but it actually started using a counting tool in right. the first grade where right. the way they learned math, which I thought was really beautiful, was through storytelling. And so there would be mm. these, you know, uh, four little gnomes who lived in the woods and every morning they would get up with the sun and they would wash their faces and scrub their beards and put on their packs and go to the mountain and bring home all these jewels, rubies and diamonds and sapphires and emeralds, and, and they would lay them all out on the table. And of course, the children all had a little leather yeah. pouch full of yeah. these colorful stones, right? To uh -huh. represent all the different things. Okay. And then the first little, and they always teach division first in a Waldorf school. Uh -huh. It was really uh -huh. fascinating because it's not just about the the academic mathematical right. yeah. memory it's really about tying the mathematics to their inherent feeling life right and so when they, they they embody the concept of division in a character and her name was disha divide and she was very generous and she loved to share all of her jewels with her friends and her family and so she would mm. separate out and make sure that they all had the same number of rubies, same number of diamonds, same number of emeralds and sapphires. Wow. And whatever was left over, she kept for herself. A little oh. bit left over. Isn't that beautiful? And then Pasha yeah. was a very greedy little gnome and she liked to keep uh, all the jewels keep just more and more. <laughs> and poor little Misha Minus was losing his jewels every day because he had a hole in his pack and they would fall out on his way home and he'd have fewer and fewer. So they were able to form an emotional connection to the maths that they were learning. And then as they moved on in their development, they were able to translate from that fairy tale world that every seven-year-old lives in and younger mm. into a more intellectual understanding of the functionalities, right? And mm. using the abacus really helped bridge them to, to that place of of the power of being able to manipulate numbers mentally, yeah. mental math. Wow, that's a beautiful story. Mentally. Very cool. Very, very cool. Do you find, do you find that, um, that there are deeper representations of the abacus in, in the development of not only children, because I'm sure that people meet the abacus later as well. I mean, I imagine. Yeah. Any age can right. learn how to right. use this, right? It is. I mean, like I, you know, myself, you know, time to time. Do you teach to do you teach adults? I said, I do. <laughs> but I mean, in 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 fact, I mean, like I have a teaching school where the most of the time children, younger children coming, five right. to like you know, high school kids. Yeah. But time to time I was invited by the cottage or even high school. And then teaching and the teachers who are teaching in those special education, you know, uh, study, which is blind school teachers. Mm -hmm. So I do teach those people. And then especially it was a very funny thing when I was I, I was invited by teaching to, at, you know, art college. Oh. You know, artist artist has a very different way of the, seeing the thing like a, like, like it's so many 
different countries, so many different languages, right? So same thing, math or numbers, people said, this is the math, you got to learn this. If you don't understand, you failed, A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. F. That is the educational system, which is to me is, it's, I don't really appreciate it. Especially I came to this country, I am an immigrant. My English never be perfect, the per, you know, comparing the person who were born and raised here. But vice versa, if you coming to my country, are you able to be perfect as much as I can speak the way how Japanese people? It never be. It's okay to be you know vague part, you know comfortable enough to communicate, right? right? So same thing like an education system is like a school. It's all political. Yeah, you know they just have to be you know you just you know learn. A, B, C, D, E, and then F, okay, then, then, you know, you take a test or you pass. Okay, let's go next. And then this and this. Then the end of that school term, taking the test, oh, you're done. Okay, now you're going to second grade. Oh, you're done. Now third grade, fourth grade. And then do you really think those children learn the skill? No. No, they, they don't. don't. And they learn, and they're with a different teacher every year who has to right. learn who their students are Brand right. new every year. This is one of the things that I yeah. love about Waldorf education was that the first grade teacher stays with their children through eighth grade. Throughout, these right? teachers are understanding the ups yeah, and like downs, the challenges, the successes of every single child in that yeah. constellation. It's almost a, a parental responsibility for the education of that yeah. group, that constellation yeah. of stars. Right. How do parents... Can you give a, a general profile of the parents that find your school, your abacus school for their children? What are they looking for that they're not you know, getting in mainstream education? What they're looking for is, I think, you know, like a more to me is, first of all, of course, the math basic skills, you know. So then they wanted to be, you know, like a above the grade level, the basic foundation to be more stronger, especially the parents who has a girls, they wanted to be in you know, a confidence of the numbers. Right. But the top of it, what I have been teaching, yes, I only have been teaching mental calculations through the abacus, but the, we teaching them to the perseverance and the discipline. Yeah. Okay, it, again, this is a cultural thing to me, very much cultural thing. So when I was teaching the adult, those uh, artists always said, oh my God, I wish I could learn this when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So then I did not have those fear of the numbers, fear of the, as you know, math. What school teaches is kind of a specific thing, but the, almost 99% of the people would never even use the algebra, even simple thing. <laughs> what we need true. is addition, subtraction. That's it. Sometimes yeah, a little basic, bit of a yeah. multiplication and then division. Even most of the people even don't use the multiplication and the division. They only do the addition and subtraction throughout our life, yeah. right? But the school somehow, political, building up the, you know, other people to making the, you know, so that's why children, all of us learn something unnecessary, you know, subject and the thing, which is okay. But, you know, at the end of the day, no one remember what they learn, right? And then, you know, even now, more information coming along, and then even sometimes some, you know, parents reaching me, do you teach this higher mass? Do you teach this higher mass? And then I always said, no, I don't. I only teach mental calculation through using the abacus. And then that is a full basic element of the calculation are the most needed, yeah. most needed. And then top of it, we teach them to perseverance and also discipline. Because calculation, if you give up on the middle of the calculation, you would never get the answer, yeah. right? Yep. And then once you meet, meet, you know, let's say 38 plus 59 plus 44 plus 69, if you one step at a time, you have to calculate. But if you make a mistake, the beginning of the, the end, 
one size wrong. It doesn't matter. Oh, one long or 10 long or 180 long. It doesn't matter. Wrong is wrong. Right. Right. But you, if you really, you know, try to be not to follow the direction to not to give up. Right. And then also, like I said earlier, if you are not appreciate what they are learning and if you are not respecting what you are giving, the end of the day, you are screwed. That's yeah. how I always, a very sim simple thing to me. Like, you know, sometimes yeah. kids, this abacus, this is the forfeit. This is the back, right? But sometimes this looks like a, you know, instrument. Yeah, and it does look like a musical children, instrument, I was really thinking. Right? Like this, musical instrument. And then sometimes children do this. Oh, like a like roller. A toy. Like yeah. a massage roller, yeah. Right. So then I said to them, by the way, don't do that. <laughs> don't you, even though this is a thing, this is the abacus, but have some respect. Have some respect. Where is your face? Here. Where is your back? Here. Okay. If someone pushing your head to the table and pushing down, how do you feel? How do you feel? I don't feel good. I don't want to do anything. Okay, then don't do it to the abacus too. Have some respect. I love that. Well, listen, everything is energy, whether it's a person or whether it's an abacus or whether it's a teacup or, or whatever. We all are energy. And if right. we are using, I, I, I see so clearly the value of teaching young children the abacus, because as you say, it's not just about numbers. It's no. about working the imagination and their capacity right. for mental calculations. It's about right. the courage to move right. beyond what they perceive as a limitation, yeah? Right. It's about perseverance and discipline, as you say, and right. respecting not only objects that are tools for learning, right? right? right. But also respecting yourself enough right. to treat everything around right. you with, with right. dignity. Now. I, and thank you for that. I mean, this is this is mind blowing for me because I failed big fat F on every math class I ever took in my life. I, you know how some people have struggled with reading or they're a late bloomer, right? Some people struggle with math. Many people struggle with math the way it's taught. Yeah. Other people struggle with languages, right? Yeah. And I love that you brought up mathematics as a language because I've always had an ease with languages and I've always had an ease with spelling and reading and all those other things. Math eluded me. It was the, the uh, uh, reason for, for abuse and yeah. attack, not only at school, but in, at my, in my home. Um, I had, even when you're, when you're saying numbers, I get sweaty palms. I know. <laughs> so when I went I to know. university, when I went to university, they looked at my, my transcript and they said, you really suck at math, don't you? And I said, yeah, I do. I said, <laughs> we have a class but, for people like you. And I said, what's you know, that? they said it's called I introduction to logic, <laughs> introduction to logic. And it had no numbers. It was all words and it was all concepts no numbers you know and so and I aced it I have no problem with logic and this teaches logical thinking from a different tactile right imagination yeah. connection yes, yes yes that's what I'm yeah exactly so abacus is a very hand eye coordination and tactile so this is a universal language even yeah. though I was, you know, kind of trying to, you know, like, a, you know, introducing the abacus to the, you know, like, a, you know, another country, another people who do even do not speak the language of the English and Japanese, but I can still show them. And then they understand because it's a visual. And then sometimes when I'm going out to the demonstration in front of the, you know, hundred and, you know, like, a, you know, thousand of those audience, I cannot provide this abacus to the, all the participants, all the attendees. But what I usually do, okay, by the way, do you know, even yourself, Henry, you have an abacus in your bodies. How? Where? Well, in your hand. So 
look at the, you know, like I'm making into that, you know, like a rock. Make a fist. Okay. Yeah. Make it the fist and then pointing at the index finger. Okay. This is the one. Is our and all my listeners at, doing this? Make a fist yeah. and I'll point, point your index finger out. So that is the one. And yeah. the pointing out to the middle finger. This is a well, two. two. Pointing out to the, yeah, pointing out to the uh, ring finger. Ring finger is three. This is a three. And the pointing out to the baby finger is a four. Yeah. So after four is a five, but that there we don't have the another finger below the pinky, right? right? So then you have to close the four fingers in and then, and then point it out to the thumb. Your thumb. What up. do you think? This thumb. Thumb up is five. It's five. One, this two, is the value of the five. Five. Yeah. And then what do you think? It's six. Five and the one. Oh, so, okay. So five thumb up, the thumbs up with your fist closed represents. Five. Five. And then like your point, like you're making a gun. Yeah, like a gun. Hand, right? Yeah. That's so this is a six, five, one, seven, and then six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine. That is the one, you know, base 10. So now here, abacus is the same thing. One, two, two, three, four, right? If I'm moving up five, this, and then this is a five. The thumb. Six, seven, eight, nine. Wow. So you have, everybody has abacus in their body. Hey, are you like me, always looking for ways to make a positive impact in the world? Well then join me in sponsoring Desire Child Care Organization. We are a legally incorporated, fully volunteer-based organization in Uganda committed to providing essential needs, holistic arts-based education, and a safe family environment to 33 vulnerable children, ages 2 to 14. Your monthly sponsorship can help improve the lives of these kids toward a better future. Desire Child Care is different from any other charity I know because, well, we have zero administrative overhead. Every penny goes to the kids. And we have a plan toward self-sufficiency through agriculture. So support is temporary. It's kind of like a, a leg up. Visit DesireChildCare.org to learn more and get involved. Let's empower and inspire the Desire Kids together. Thanks. So in the good thing is this. So from your side, on the, uh, the right side right, is one. This is a tens. Okay, so your right. Okay. Is so this the is ones. one, two, three, four. Your left hand is the five, ten. six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, zero. Right? From you, I'm trying yeah. to do that, you know, like so my way, if I do this, is a one, zero, one, zero, two, three, four, five. So each that's time amazing. I'm going to the public, that's how I, you know, demonstrate. And then they realize, wow. That makes sense. That's easy. Why school didn't the teach like that? Why Listen, that? Well, most most things are in the palm of your hand. <laughs> yeah, everything. Well, we work so hard. We work so hard when it's all right there in your hands. That what a, what an amazing thing the human body is that it gives us all right. The, and that that connects us to our ancestors all the way back to our original ancestors. Right. We sit around a fire and count the stars in the sky. You yeah, know? it does. It does. Beautiful. I mean, so that's why it's it's very simple. And then even me, like a little bit back, when I started the teaching Avakas, was not my original idea. Yeah. When even though when I was a kid, I loved it so much, I really wanted to, you know, like doing something. But the moment I came here and then I started, you know, I married, and then all of a sudden, I lost my power. Mm -hmm. I really, I lost my power and I had a children, you know, now uh, 95, 1995, I have my oldest child born, 98, my second child born, 2000, my son born. And after that, okay, what is next? But again, yeah. you know, then actually my ex-husband told me after he read the New York Times magazine, he said, you should teach abacus. What abacus? What are you talking about? I said, <laughs> no, I don't. Then I said, you know, my first word, I still remember. I don't want to show off my skill. 
<laughs> what are you talking about? You are not showing off. I said, then what? Then he said, you are sharing your skill. Hmm. Right. Sharing. But that time, I was so coward. I even <laughs> wanted to be hide behind the curtain. And I don't really need to do this. I, 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 I kind of lost myself after almost nearly five years of this, you know, like a motherhood, just staying at home, mom, taking care of the kids, you know, create, you know, cooking, cleaning, all these things. I kind of lost my wing. Um, but luckily, I had something still inside. And yeah. then I really appreciate my ex-husband, the children's father. He kind of pushed me off. I said, okay. Then that's how I started teaching Abacus to students from my old house. And wow. then just gradually, slowly, just, you know, like, uh, and then I, I, again, I never even think I could grow a business like this. And I started the teaching, like, especially like a, three years ago, COVID happened. Yeah. And then now, all of a sudden, students coming from New York, Florida, Boston, you know, and then, you know, like... <laughs> Georgia, Atlanta. Sometimes, honestly, sometimes some people, you know, contacting me from Spain and yeah. Italy. But the, the problem is, time difference is not no longer, you know, like able to teach. Right. But it's I'm so grateful. In a way, I'm grateful that COVID gave me the some chance that the, which I never even imagined. Oh yeah. Because Sure. Now, I mean, listen, with every challenge comes opportunity. With every challenge comes opportunity. And if human beings are one thing, we are resilient. We can change. Right. We're adaptable, right, to our situation. Right. And so yeah. what I appreciate about this conversation, I can't believe it's already been an hour. Uh, I can <laughs> talking about this with you for another three. Um, you'll just have to come back and, and join me. <laughs> I, I, I don't feel like we're, I think we're just scratching the surface. Um but when we talk about everything that we've talked about, the, the abacus is not just a tool for learning math. No. And it's not about numbers, right? When we're, we're no. learning one, two, three, four, five, and writing those numbers and doing long division and multiplication, addition and subtraction, that can be very limiting. This opens up a whole new perspective on the function of math on the quantum level, even going deep within the human psyche and the human spirit and, and imagining outside. The past and the future don't exist yet. And they don't no. exist anymore, right? They no. only live in our imagination. The only thing that's real is this moment right now. And your entire biography, my entire biography, and the biographies of all of our ancestors have led us to this conversation in this moment, right. prepared us for this. And so yeah. we get to decide where we go from here. And I think that what's exciting to me about this is that ultimately, and again, this is another universal life skill, is that abacus gives one the confidence to move beyond their limitations or their perceived limitations. It exactly. makes everything, po it's a tool that can help make everything possible. It is. And then, you know, Handy, can I just add this? I have been really dream about this for many years. <laughs> you know, I'm sure, you know, Spain or any countries now you go, we go, mm -hmm. sushi. Everybody knows the sushi. And right. even ever sushi equals Jap you know Japanese, Japan. Right. People exactly. know that. But I'm sure you also can recognize almost nearly 30 years ago, people, many, very few people knew. And then some people were very ignorant. And said, I remember when I came to US here, said, What is your, your favorite food? That was my school, you know, questions. And I said, I love sushi. And then, you know, that reaction of the people, Ugh, yuck, disgusted. Oh. That was a, that, that was a, you know, reaction I got 31 years ago. Wow. But now, no. now, if I said, hi, my name is Miwako. Oh, you must be Japanese. Yes, I am. Oh, I love sushi. 
<laughs> now people quickly connect to the dots to dots Japanese sushi. Right. Okay. So True. same thing. My dream, my goal, only one person, which is only me. But if I can teach 10 teachers, those 10 teachers can teach in that hundreds of the teachers, you know, and then teacher, teacher. So same thing. Abacus will become a sushi. <laughs> next sushi. <laughs> Abacus that is my goal. Sushi. I love it. Sushi. That is it. You know, I have well, been really dreaming about. <laughs> there's a listen. There's a reason that the abacus has survived a millennium or longer. Yeah. There's a reason that that wherever it originated, whether it was ancient Egypt or even before, there's a reason it has survived. And I, I think know. that right now, people in our generation and younger are starting to see the value in yeah. identifying ancient modalities that still were acupuncture, right? Is another one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yoga is another one. All of these things that that have proven themselves yeah. to be valuable. And this, this gentleman I interviewed recently was talking about how AI is going to take over is already taking over and making passe the human intellect. We don't have to think about anything. We just look it up. And he was talking about that as a positive. <laughs> and I was thinking, mm, is it is it a positive thing to, because his perspective was that it was going to open us up to more creativity and more imagination if we did not have to get bogged down in our intellect. That I can see a value, but I can also see that a tool like an abacus feeds both. It feeds the intellect right. and it feeds the creative. Right. Like, you know, like a, it's like a recent, we have, we have heard many times organic, organic, yeah. organic, organic. And then especially after COVID hit, you know, things really, you know, kind of, you know, screwed, you know, like mixing up so much and then we kind of lost. So that is a time I talked to my marketing team and then people, you know, instead of trying to finding out the here and there, here and there, without knowing, no, why don't we just going back to the root? Simple, yeah. Simple, because at the end of the day, we all human, we all hit it, we all Hold it because of COVID. It's not the only you, me, no, all, all of us, all of us. So how we, me, you can make things like going back normal is I think we just have to look down where we coming from and what is most important thing is at this moment, instead of thinking about future uh, after, you know, like a month later, a year later, at this moment, this is the moment what we really can do something to changing the world. I think this is, you know, Henry, I'm going to give into the next, you know, co-host, you know. Like, yes, I was going to ask you what's your them. question. This is a, that, is, that is my question to the next host. How, what is the things you can give in, at this moment to changing the, you know, like a, I think that is about my question to them. I mean, I what that. you can, what you can, you know, right. sometimes, you know, like a fancy question making, but the end of the day, one person, like I told you, one person can do something to changing in the world. What you can do to changing, to, you know, like giving you a you know, like passion and skill to changing the next generation. That is something I really wanted to give into the next person. I love that. I'm going to answer that right now. I think <laughs> I think it's you. I think it, the answer for me is myself, authentically and fully myself. Because if I am living authentically in the moment, embracing yeah. everything who I, everything that I am, you know, there's that saying, "Nobody's perfect." I don't believe it. No. You are as perfect as you can be in this moment. It's what you yeah. do in the next moment where you can yeah. imagine for yourself what is better in the next moment and move to that point B, right? Yeah. And so if I'm doing that authentically, everyone who is a witness and and to you, you know, that you went from zero to where you are now, that you yeah. 
you went and followed your heart. You went and said, this feels good. This feels right to me. If it feels yeah. good, it probably is. If it doesn't feel good, guess what? It's probably not. So so if you we are each living authentically in this moment, that gives effortless permission to everyone who's a witness to do the same on their own terms. So thank you. For that. That's, <laughs> thank you. That's a good way to put a button on this yeah. great conversation. Yeah. I didn't thank know what you. to expect because I was like, oh, math, I can't, I can't deal. But, yeah. but you know, something in me said, I need to face this. It's not that I'm fearful of math, but I, I yeah. have such a, a trigger in me. But you yeah. have alleviated that. And I thank you very much. Of course. Thank you for yourself having Yourself and your story and your wisdom, because this is going to help a lot of people. And I will definitely, definitely look forward to our next conversation. Thank you so much, Henry. Thank you. You've been listening to season four of the Lost Traveler podcast with Henry Cameron Allen. Visit me online at henryallen.org. Thank you to my guests and thank you for tuning in. Let's keep striving for a better world together.